Welcome back to our chess story series. And for today's game, I have another little known masterpiece from the 1950s between Yuri Averbach, who is currently the oldest grandmaster in the world, playing white, and Alexander Kazimirovich Tolosh, who happened to be the coach and the second of Boris Spassky, the world champion. So Tolosh was usually an attacking player, but I guess this being a training match, Yuri decided to take the attack upon himself. And what Yuri did was use the weaklings in Black's house and push Black's pieces back. Tolosh was usually an aggressive player trying to push and push. And in this game, he was the one pushed back and it didn't really help Black at all. As we'll see. We start off with the Queen's Pawn opening and Yuri says, give me your center. I want the whole center to myself. Black says, yeah, me too, but I'll do it with a knight. Later, I'll choose between d5, c5, e6, g6. We'll see. We'll stay flexible. And White says, what about I take the extended center? We call this the extended center. And Yuri says, give me all the pawns. I'll have this square, that square, this square, that square, this square, that square, this square. This square all the squares. Black says no, because I'll break down your center first. And if you take me, come on, take my pawn, take it, so I can get it back later and destroy your center pawns, have two center pawns against your lonely guy on e2. So white says fine, I'll push it. And in the meantime, how's your knight doing? He's not coming out? Oh, poor guy, why did you give me all this space then? The pawn's well defended, it gets in black's way, it takes away squares from the bishop, the knight, and the space grabber as well. So black says, let's get rid of your space grabber. No space grabbers here. And white says, I actually like my space grabber. I think I'll keep him, sorry. And if you take it, we'll take back. And I have enough defenders, not a problem. Black says, fine, I'll trade it. And I won't take all the way, but at least I got myself some space. At least my bishop can come out or my rook will come out later on. He makes sure that the white pawn doesn't get too far. We don't want the white pawn getting up to like d6, becoming a nail pawn, and then bishop g5, knight d5. Then it gets really nasty and really ugly. So that's why he stopped the pawn, but white wants it anyway. So white wants these steamrollers to steamroll through the center and if you let them they will this is known as the benoni opening also known as the son of sorrow if you translate it uh, and the son of sorrow is this pawn it's not the happiest pawn as we'll see in this game and white usually tries to bully it either with the bishop or tries to steamroll it with his pawns and as you can see white gets all these pawns a three versus two majority and black, on the other hand, has to be proud of these guys because on the queen side, they're lying in waiting and they're waiting for their chance to shine. And one day, if they do get rolling, they can get scary too. kick out that knight and show what they can do. And black also shows the other tool of this opening, the g7 bishop. The g7 bishop will fire on the whole diagonal held the pawns along, keep the king safe. The king is very safe with that knight and bishop until the pawns start rolling in. And even then, the bishop usually helps him not to get mated, but it is hard to stop these pawns. So before pushing the pawns, Yuri decides, what if I get the knight close by? What if the knight can help the center? And then later the pawns will come raging. Black says, what about I just castle and put an end to your pawns? You want to push your pawns? No, my rook won't let you. I'll block you. Uh, you can say, why not just play e5? But then isn't this guy lonely? You want to push the pawn, but then d5 is lonely and you don't really do anything. You just put a knight unprotected in the middle and saying, come get me. All the black pieces will come and get him. So it really doesn't do much because he's not stable. He can see far, he sees everywhere, but doesn't feel secure. So for that reason, White didn't push and instead just got ready. Yuri gets ready, finishes developing before starting any attack. That's what we all want to do. Black says, uh, how are you pushing your pawns if I'm pressuring it? How are you pushing it if I'm controlling the square? You're not. You're not going to get to e5. It's mine. And White says, patience, young one, patience. 
Um, even in, in this game, White was very patient with the attack. He didn't try to break through, just push pawns right away. No, he got everyone ready and only then pushed through. Black says, can I get some pawns rolling? You know, you have all these scary pawns. Can I get some pawns too? I want some pawns. Didn't work out very well because after a4, the pawns are stuck. Now that's what usually happens, but here it's really hard to play b5 because even if you play knight d7, rook b8, how are you going to play b5? They have too many faces on b5, too many laser beams zapping away. Uh, sometimes they even push a5, which didn't happen in this game. But if it does happen, then it kind of freezes the spawn and sometimes allows the knight to get to the outpost. At the very least, they try to stop the pawn from becoming a majority on the queen side. Right? Black knight says, maybe I can help. Maybe I can help here. Usually it doesn't go to b6. If it gets to b6, it just gets kicked away. But definitely helps with e5 and stopping any pawn breaks. So Yuri says, what if I say hi to your pawn? Your queen was guarding it, but who's guarding it now? Knight, do you want to come here? Come here right now. I'm telling you, come right here. Yeah, good. Stay. And now I'll just take your pawn. I'll, I'll take with my knight and get your pawn to e5 so that later on your pawns are your worst enemies. This guy is blocking your bishop. This guy is saying, please help me, help me. He's not helping anyone and he's in need of assistance. And on the other hand, d5 is glorious. d5 will start going, going and gone before you know it. So white has a very healthy pawn all the way to the end game. And this bishop is starting to cry because he had a, such a promising future, but not anymore. So in the actual game, black said, what if I protect with the queen and the pawn can stay here for now and the knight will come here later that's okay our other knight eyes your sorrow the son of sorrow on d6 needs more and more help unfortunately there aren't that many pieces that can help him that knight can't come here that bishop doesn't want to go there and this guy is saying let me walk into my nice outpost on c4 say hi to this square hi to e5 help the pawn along get my soldiers moving and also how is your d6 pawn doing not so great i'm sorry to hear i'm so sorry that's your fault you made it a backwards pawn so black says let me blockade the outpost you're not getting the square I'm not going to give it to you. And in the meantime, my bishop can come out. My rook can support the knight. And if you ever take, which you wanted to earlier, I'll be ready. If you give me the dark square bishop, that guy's a monster. He's just as good as the knight. Usually they cancel out each other. My bishop's amazing. He can fire and so can your knight. So it's a fair trade. Um, if you don't want to take, how will you live with this knight in your way? He's magnificent. That being said, he's magnificent and doing nothing. He's like a waste without flowers. He's just sitting there and in a way blocking the rook. Yuri wants to kick him away, but isn't sure how. How do you kick away such a knight? Do you take him? You don't want to. Do you trade him? But you like this knight. You want to keep him and bring him there later. You don't want to trade him. Should we kick him? Yeah, but how? Do you put the bishop here? Invade, invade. Suddenly they're coming after you and that's annoying too. So before he does anything else, before he starts kicking, remember he's patient, right? He says, first, I'll make sure you never come there. I'll take it away from all your pieces. Bishop, no. Knight, no. Knight, no. Nobody goes to g4. And when they can't go there, I can start looking into uh, 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 pawn breaks. And the pawns are coming given time. Black decides to help out his knight. But it's not so easy because you're blocking your bishop. You still didn't finish the peace race. You can say, why does it matter? At least the bishop's open. But... How are your rooks doing? It's always a domino effect in chess. If one domino is stuck at home, the others can't fall. The white pieces are all out. Yeah, notice the rooks are connected. This guy's firing. 
the black pieces are stumbling a little bit. They're just a little off and there is not enough space. Because if you play something like this, which you want to play in a perfect world, you like the bishop here helping b5 and then with the rook on b8, you break through. But what do you do against bishop b3? How do you save your knight? He's magnificent and trapped. Nothing he can do. Sorry. So at that point, black started to get desperate and tries to find some square for the other knight. Maybe he's thinking of freeing the bishop. Maybe he's thinking of even f5 one day. Hard to believe, but who knows? Um, usually the knights try to help each other, but here they're in each other's way. They're called superfluous. Okay. So Yuri says, where is your knight going? Where? Not here, not here, not here, not here, no, not there, not here, nowhere to go. He's in the middle and also trapped. The poor Benotti knight has to look for an exit and he has to exit to the least desirable way, to the least desirable square on f7. Why would he be on f7? Why would he want to block that bishop? He doesn't, but what's the other option? Do you play the knight to a fate where this guy does nothing? So he was running out of good ideas and he decided to block the breakthrough. He was thinking there is never an e5, so the knight will come here and protect my lovely pawn. Everything is great. No more sorrow. But this sorrow is just beginning. Poor black has to carry the knight back home, bury the bishop at home on g7. Who's helping him out? Nobody. And if he ever plays f5, which is kind of like what happened, then the king side goes. Then who's protecting the king? If you try to bring out the bishop there, eh, I can always squeeze him with g4, g5. Bishop on f8? Nope. Not exactly the pride of your position that he used to be. For that reason, the bishop makes way. Remember, he's very patient. He looks at the rook looking here. He sees the rook dreaming about a five and says, no, no, you don't get to hit my bishop. My bishop will be safe and everything's connected. Look how white's pieces are all connected. Connected, 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 connected. The rooks are connected. Pawns connected with knight. Queen, queen helping everyone. Queen helping the knights and knights helping the pawns. Uh, the only thing that's not covered is f4, but that's okay because no one's hitting it either. Later on, we can always go g3, king g2, right? Because everything's connected, black has nothing to fire at, okay? So black says, maybe I can make tricks work, but this is called going for tactics from a worse position. Your pieces are struggling. Your knight is crying. Other knight, not much better. Bishop, disappointed in you and how you treated him. The rook, don't even get me started on that rook. She's not happy with you either. So then you try to go for tactics and try to go for some pin and uh, removal of the guard on e2. You're trying to win the bishop, but you're trying from a worse position where your pieces are crying. So the only side who should be going for tactics here is the one with the better pieces, white. White's pieces will get in position, start pushing, squeeze like the Trojan used to do, and eventually break through either with e5 or knight c4 or sometimes f5 burying this guy, sometimes g5, but one way or the other, white can improve forevermore. Whereas black is stuck. Alexander is saying, well, let me out. What do I do? I don't know. G5, but that looks ugly. And he wants that square, but two knights can't just both go there, even if this pawn was gone. Even if F4 is gone, your knights can't be perfect anymore. There are just not enough squares for all of them. Okay? And that sums up this game. Black is getting squeezed out of space. He tries to get the space, tries to fire on the open file, but white goes for tactics. White says, you want the bishop? Try to get him. And black says, I have a plan. My plan is, I'll give you a pawn. 
I'm not taking it back because then you'll just take a queen. No, no, no. I have a plan that you will lose the bishop after I take your knight. Bishop takes knight. You take back whichever way queen or pawn. I take the bishop and I'm winning. And that's what he expects. Right? He says, I'm going to win a piece. Thank you very much for your bishop. And white says, okay, go ahead. I don't mind. I don't need the bishop. I need your roof cover. I need your bricks on G6 and H7. And when they're gone, when the bricks are gone, who's helping the king? Those guys who abandoned him? No. Your bishop, the only one who could help, is now gone. If you try to bring him back, I'll destroy your knight. Your h7 pawn is falling. That doesn't look good either. For that reason, black takes back and says, please take my pawn, take my pawn, let my bishop come back. No, the bishop is gone forever. And now that there is no dark square bishop, the light square bishop never existed in the first place. And we don't mind losing our bishop. He didn't help anyways. What we wanted was the pawn cover. When the pawn cover is gone, you have no bishop to help you. No piece to help you because the rook is gone. The only one who could is maybe the knight. But it turns out the knight is not enough in this case. Okay. If the king goes here, we collect. So the king has to run to f8. But how can we get to this king at this point? Yuri was thinking, if I play bishop h4, you maybe collect or maybe you can bring out the queenside pieces. Hmm, I have to hurry. What do I need to do here? I need to get rid of your rook. If your rook is gone, your king has nowhere to run. If I let your king run, maybe he can jump here, 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 and hide. No, we must cut him off. The fence goes up on the e-file. It's a very tall fence, doesn't let the king run away. You could say, why not just take the knight? Why not just take here? But that doesn't look too good either. To be honest, probably bishop h4 with this in mind. Also, we have some ideas like bishop g5, bishop h6. And if you ever take my other rook comes into the party, I don't think you'll survive that either. So for that reason, black says, fine. Just give me one second. I'll get the knight out or the queen back home and everything's all right. He gets the knight out waiting for bishop d7, rook e8, going into an end game with the extra piece. But first of all, how many pawns do we have for the piece? Three. <laughs> okay. They have a knight for three pawns. More importantly, how's your king doing? No one's helping him except for that knight. And we can work around him too. How's this knight doing? Not really helping much. He wants d5, but he'll never get the chance. The bishop, only good square and doesn't have the time for bishop d7, as you'll see in this game. At this point, we have a killer blow. We have a tactic that finishes the game. I'll give you three seconds. You can pause the video and try to find the killer blow for white. All our pieces are ready to fire. We just need to find this one move. Ready? Pause. Three, two, one. Okay. If you say the move rookie eight, you are onto something. Suddenly, black has to take. There is no choice but to take. And why are we giving away free rooks? Because we want decoys. You know, the knight was a very good defender. Like, there are no checks because of him. No check, no check, no check. So we just have to go around the knight. How? Get the king out of there. When the king is gone, then the knight can't help anymore. The king is too far away. We finally get the check. And here, Alex resigned. Why? Because this is forced mate. The bishop is the hero. Shining star at the end of the show. And if you go the other way, the bishop will be the hero even earlier with the same result. You could throw the knight away, doesn't matter to me. And the queen side never woke up. Very often in this miniature games, there are a bunch of pieces that never woke up. They never got the time. Black was too busy 
stopping the e pawn, defending his d pawn, and the sorrow was there all along. And his good things, like the bishop, disappeared. The pawns never got going, and the e5 square gone as well. All because white was patient. You gotta be patient in any attack, and then the opponents will retreat themselves. You don't even need to do anything special. So I hope you can squeeze your opponents in the same way that white did here, doing a patient attack and squeezing black's pieces into submission.